Welcome to favornetwork.net to the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Oscar T. Moses. I serve as the senior pastor here at Mount Hermon, located at 7848 South Normal in Chicago, on the south side. We are the traditional church. That is, we are the traditional church with the progressive members, membership, and message. Every Sunday morning, a message of hope is preached from the Mount Hermon Baptist Church. It is our prayer that if you are unsaved, that through this telecast, that you would come to know Jesus Christ. Once again, welcome to Favor Network. Bring in your scattering thoughts, and let's enter into worship. God bless you. Yeah. 
I don't see how y'all can just sit there like that. Oh, if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's stand for the Lord's Prayer. church said amen. Listen, make your way down to the altar. It is the hour of prayer. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in 
the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I. How many are going to trust in the Lord? I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust. In. Ooh. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Till I die, I will trust. In. I will trust in the Lord. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat him. I'm going to treat him. Oh, till I, till I die. Oh, I'm going to treat it. I'm going to treat it. Repart, right. I'm, oh. Our Father, we come this morning to thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for last night's laying down. And we thank you for this morning's rising. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up to see a brand new day. And Lord, we recognize that you have all power in heaven and earth in your hands. We recognize, Lord, that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. We recognize, God, that you are in total control of the universe. Father, we come confessing that we've fallen short of your glory. Lord, right now we ask that you would create within us a clean heart. And please, God, renew the right spirit within us. Lord, we recognize that we have fallen short, that our faith has not met up with the words that we say. But Lord, we ask right now that you would clean us up, forgive us one more time, own us as your children. God, we thank you today we thank you that things are as well as they are. We thank you, Lord, for the bright sunshine day. We thank you, Lord, for breath to breathe, air to breathe. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood that's running warm in our bodies right now. We realize, God, that somebody laid down last night and didn't wake up this morning. And so, God, we thank you for the brand new day. And, Lord, we don't want to ask for too much today. We just want to say thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for bringing us through many tours and snares. We, we thank you for bringing us through valleys and through the darkest hours of the night. We, we thank you, Father, for feeding us when we were hungry. We thank you for putting money in our pockets when we didn't have none. We thank you, Father, for clothing us and putting a, a roof over our head. We thank you, Father, for the simple things. And then, God, we thank you, Father, for the sacred things. We thank you for a church home to come to. We thank you for a church family to pray with. And God, we ask right now that you would bless the hand that I hold, bless the neighbor that stands in front or in back of me, whatever they stand in need of. Lord, touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray right now that you would touch those who are in dire straits, those who are homeless, hurting, helpless right now. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Then Holy Spirit, have your way today. Have your way today. Ride on, King Jesus. 
move throughout these hearts of ours. Set our hearts on hallowed fire. And then, God, we want to stop right now and say thank you, sir. Not only thank you for that which you have done, but thank you for that which you're going to do. We thank you right now for opening up our eyes. We thank you right now for opening up our ears. We thank you right now for opening up our hearts. We just want to say thank you, sir. We've come to give you the glory. We've come to give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, the sweetest name we know. In Jesus' name, friend when we're friendless. In Jesus' name, bread when we're hungry. In Jesus' name, water when we're thirsty. In Jesus' name, rock in a weary land. We thank you right now in the only name that matters. And we count it all joy through faith. And all of those who love the Lord said amen. They said amen again. Now throw both hands and head back and say it like you mean it. As you make your way back to your seat, encourage somebody. Tell them it's good to see you. Good to see you alive. and into his courts with praise. We are here this morning on the first Sunday of April to say thank you, Father, for all of your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us out today. Thank you for bringing us through the night, Father God. Just thank you, just thank you, just thank you, Lord. Oh. I'm here to welcome our visitors this morning. Um, we have Jeanette Reyes and Antoine Morrow. Could you stand, please? Um, they're from the neighborhood. They live across the street, and they just decided to come over to see us today. We're glad you came. Uh, we have Derek Jackson, who's also from the neighborhood. Welcome. We have Frederick Williams, who's the husband of one of our members, Annie Williams. And we have Carmelina Harper, who is the niece of our member, Michael Rogers. Do we have any other guests here? If so, would you please stand? On behalf of the most dynamic. I don't even have words. But on behalf of my pastor, our pastor, Dr. Moses, and the Mount Hermon family, we'd like to say welcome. Thank you for coming out and enjoy the service today. Thank you. Mount Hermon, can we stand and welcome our guests? Come on, Mount Hermon, let us fellowship. Some of us haven't seen each other all week long. Oh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, I'm leaning, oh, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, oh, leaning. 
everlasting on. Oh, I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, safe and secure from all along. I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, leaning on the everlasting on. Oh, I'm leaning, oh, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, oh, leaning, leaning on the everlasting on. Oh, I'm leaning, oh, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, oh, leaning, leaning on the everlasting on. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise up in this. baptism here today no candidates for baptism all right come on let's receive the choir say amen for them as they come Thank you. 
that I might dwell in the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your protection. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your provisions. We're thankful, Lord, to be back in the house of prayer one more Sunday morning. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to make it back particularly on this first Sunday morning where we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross of Calvary. We come today, Lord, to commemorate his death and his suffering until he comes again. We come to break the bread and drink of the wine. We pray, God, right now that you would take these carnal elements and transform them for spiritual usage. We pray, oh God, that he or she that receives of this would receive it with the right spirit, knowing that you have forgiven us of all of our sins, knowing that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. We thank you right now. Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts to receive this sacrament. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen and thank God.
today and be made complete. Singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory. One justly saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Singing glory to his name. Everybody. Brother Dickens, want to make sure that those that are partaking of the Lord's Supper, Supper are those that are baptized believers. Amen.
Amen. I would ask those who are going to uh, take communion to serve, won't you come at this time? Those deacons, preachers, wives, or whoever come at this time. able to make it out on Sunday and so we thank God for these that are going to serve uh, to serve them the Lord's Supper let's pray our Father and our God we thank you now for the opportunity to serve pray oh God that as these go forth that you would fill them with your spirit pray oh God for those who are they are going to share with that their hearts would be open and receptive to your Holy Spirit thank you right now father we do give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray with thanksgiving. And the church said, amen.
everywhere I go. God's been good to me. All in my home. Keep on blessing me. How many of you came to praise God this morning? I said, how many of you truly came to give God some praise on this morning? Hallelujah. 
for the word of God says that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Every praise, Every praise is to our God. Every word on one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, every praise is to our God. Every word on one accord. Every praise, every praise. Come on, quiet God. God, my healer, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Three point. God, my Savior. God, my healer, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise to our God. Every word on one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Come on, let's give God some praise up in here. Every praise is to our God. Every word. I want to go on every praise, every praise is to our God. Yeah. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God my Savior, God my healer. Woo! Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God my Savior. Come on, you can sing it too. God my healer. How many of you know Him to be a deliverer? Oh. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. My deliverer. Yes, he is. 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 Every praise to our God. 
everywhere I wanna go every praise 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 will you see me shouting every praise will you see me dancing every praise will you see me crying every praise every praise every praise every praise every praise it's to our god yeah hallelujah let's stand did I do something? <laughs> something was about Somebody else have five. Tell him he's worthy of. Anybody know he's worthy? <laughs> my, my, my. Ain't he all right? I said, any worthy? Anybody tried him? Ah, yeah. I know the man is all right. I said, I know the man is all right. He's a friend when I'm friendless. Water when I'm thirsty. Ah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I can't say one word. I can just wave my hand. Ain't it all You know, um,
When peace like a river attendeth my way When storm clouds like sea billows roll Whatever Thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul when peace like a river attendeth my way when storm clouds like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul for 18 years my wife and I have been married and the Lord has blessed us tremendously in ways that we cannot even express but we've had some testimonies that have been birthed out of prayers that have been deferred some things that we prayed for the Lord just said wait and we have not seen that come to pass yet but then we've had some testimonies birthed out of prayers that have been delivered. Uh, we prayed a long time ago that the Lord would use us, and he's using us now more than ever. But we've also had some testimonies that have been birthed out of prayers that have been denied. Amen. There's some things that God just flat out said no. And we've come to a place that we just believe that what God is doing is best. Uh, and that's an area in our life that we have peace in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you're not careful, I said if you're not careful, when things don't turn out the way you want them to turn out, you can lose your peace of mind. You could easily fall into resentment, restlessness, and rebelliousness against God, against others, and even with yourself. But I'm learning, y'all. I haven't arrived yet, <laughs> but I'm learning. I'm learning to understand what the peace of God With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I pray that you would ask the Lord to give you what you need today. That the Lord will give you peace in areas in your life that's restless, rebellious. Right now, ask the Lord to open your heart and mind to his word. Father and our God, we thank you. Uh, we've come up to this preaching moment right now. And Lord, we ask that you would remove all distractions, uh, anything that would 
hinder you from doing your will, having your way, and sending your word. Pray, oh God, that you would, by your spirit, strengthen someone today, that they would leave here a better person than when they came. We thank you right now. It's in the strong name of Jesus. And then, Lord, use me today for your glory. Fill me with your power. Give me peace of mind. Lord, where I fall short, we ask that you would give your amazing grace. Holy Spirit, it's your time. It is our ultimate goal, Lord, that you would be glorified, the saints would be strengthened, the sinner would be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Are we ready? Aim fire. This is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It is my weapon. It is my road map in enemy country. In my Bible is found the plan of salvation. Romans 10 and 9 says, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It is by my humility towards our Christ, hospitality within our congregation, hard work within our community, that the unsaved would be one to Christ. I would that you would turn with me back to the book of Galatians, chapter 5. We're in the third part of a nine-part series entitled, What a Real Christian Looks Like. Amen. And for our hearing today, we want to read verses 22 and 23 again. When you get it, say, I've got it. it. Reading from the King James Version, verse 22 of chapter 5, you will find the words of God reads on this wise. Ready? Set? Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. For the sake of time and sensitivity of the task, let's read verse 22 once again. Ready, set, read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Stop right there. Look at your neighbor. Grab them by the hand. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It's good to see you alive. Good to see you alive in church. Pastor, need all of your prayers. All of your amens. Today's lesson, peace of mind. Look at somebody and say, I need some peace of mind. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Paul is teaching Christians, and for us today, that the fruit of the Spirit are the outward indicators of salvation. Paul is teaching us that if you ever want to see a real Christian or to know what a real Christian looks like, there are certain attributes that are displayed in their lifestyle. We begin this series sharing that the first attribute of the fruit of the Spirit is love. Let the church say love. Love. That love that Paul describes is an agape love, unconditional love. It says that if you are a born again believer, that you first of all must have love in your heart. You can't be saved or say that you're saved and hate people and treat people any type of way. You've got to have some love in your heart. As a matter of fact, 1 John says that the way that we know that we've been raised out of darkness into his marvelous light is that we love the brothering. So look at your name and say, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Paul says that we have to love. And then he says, not only do you have love, but the second attribute of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Let the church say joy. Joy steps in where happiness steps out because happiness is contingent upon happenings. But joy is an internal wellspring that God gives you. As a matter of fact, one more time, look at your neighbor and say, this joy that I have, have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Look at somebody and say, you might try to take it away. 
but you cannot take it away. You did not give it to me. I got it from God. This joy that I have, the world didn't give me. The world can't take it away. Anybody got joy today? Anybody got Jesus joy? Not happiness now because happiness is contingent upon happenings. I like Pharrell Williams. I'm happy, but I've got something better than happy. I've got some joy. Paul says you have to have love. You have to have joy. But this third attribute that Paul lifts up, the fruit of the spirit, is peace. Let the church say peace. Paul lets us know that peace is to the mind what joy is to the heart. Peace can keep your mind from a meltdown like joy can keep your heart from heaviness. Do I have any warriors in the house? And so Paul uses this word peace. In the Old Testament, it was shalom. In the New Testament, I can't even pronounce it, so I'm not going to even try. But it means an inner tranquility, an inner stillness or inner calmness that that we have that is not just present in times of peace but it's also working in the time of war it's this peace that Paul talks about is not a peace that says I'm doing all right everything is cool calm and collected so I'm cool calm and collected This peace that Paul is expressing is being cool, calm, and collected when everything is not going all right. Can't miss that. Can't miss that. He says, peace is not the absence of chaos. It's having peace in the presence of chaos. It's, It's having peace of mind. When all hell is breaking loose, it's it's having peace of mind when when trouble is mounting on every side. Paul says this is the type of peace that the world cannot give, but that only God can give. Three things I want to tell you about peace. I want to give you three points, then I'm going to sit down and shout my own self happy. The first thing you got to understand about peace, first of all, is the source of peace. May I tell you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that the world can give only false peace. That's pseudo peace. But the source of real peace comes from God. It's in John chapter 14, 27. You write it down. Read it when you get home. The apostles, the disciples were depressed. They were troubled because Jesus after being with them for three years, was on his way back to being with the Father. And he recognized that they were despondent, they were restless, they were in a state of peacelessness. And he says in John 14, 27, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, but the peace that I will give you will be able to sustain you in the midnight hour. This peace that I have, it'll be able to sustain you when people work against you. This peace, I wish y'all felt like it, will be able to sustain you when you get a disconnect notice. I'm looking for the real folk in here now. He said, this peace that I have the world, but the source of peace comes from God. That's the first thing I want you to understand, that the source of true peace comes from God. But here's something else I want you to understand. I want you to understand not only only the source of peace, but I want you to understand the substance. God help me today. Look at somebody and say, I need to know the substance of peace. The substance of peace. Mark chapter 4. Disciples were on that raging sea. You know the story. Don't make me tell the whole thing. And that storm came, and Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship. He was asleep, and, and they were restless. They were scared. They, were, they, they didn't know which way to turn, and they went downstairs on the hinder part of the ship and asked Jesus, Carest thou not that we're dying? 
And let me, let me put a, a pause right there parenthetically and, and, and ask somebody, has there ever been a time in your life when you felt that no one cared? They go down and wake Jesus up and say, Carus, thou not that we perish. Jesus comes up on the bow of the ship, Vanessa, and he says three words, peace. Y'all know the story. Be still. And the Bible says that there was stillness and there was calmness. Stillness. Calmness. Stillness. Calmness. That, that's what the substance of peace is. Stillness. Calmness. Stillness. Sometimes, when all hell, you helping me preach, <laughs> when all hell is breaking loose, you've just got to be still. Be still and know that He is God. And I wish I had about five folk didn't mind standing up and just waving your hand and said, I've learned what it's like. I've learned the power of stillness when all hell is breaking loose. Sometimes I just got to go someplace and be still. Stillness produces a calmness. I never shall forget, I was a little boy running around. My mother used to tell me, go sit down and be quiet someplace. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to go sit down. Be quiet someplace. Just shut up! Let God talk. We so busy in prayer saying, Lord, do this, go here, do that, that we never take time to say, Lord, what you got to tell me? Source of peace. Substance of peace. Leads to the sustaining power of peace. That when you have the peace of God, that you'll be able to sustain, be sustained during the storms of life. Why am I preaching this? Because there are times in life that you can lose your peace of mind. Storms can come that you have not anticipated to come your way. And if you're not anchored, if you're not anchored, you can lose it, your peace of mind. And, and when you lose your peace of mind, you find yourself want to give somebody your peace of mind. I'm looking for the real folk in here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When people just work your last black nerves and you want to give them a piece of your mind, you want to tell them just where to get off at. But if you got peace of God, let me tell you what peace of God is. Peace of God literally is saying, I know something you don't know. You ever had somebody come up to you and say, I can't stand you, and I hope this and that, and this and that happen to you. You say, all right. That's peace right there. That, that's not allowing somebody else, because you, it's literally saying, I, I know something you don't know. I'm going to get you if that's the last thing that I do. All right. I know that no matter what you say, no matter what happens, no matter what goes my way, I serve a God that's in control and he has me in the palm of his hand and what you do can't hurt me when God has me in the palm of his hand. You gotta be careful because people could cause you to lose your mind. Folks sit up in church, for church folk, thinking of little ways to get back at their neighbor, trying to get back at one another in church. Lord, deliver me. I ain't scared of y'all. Peace of mind. 
Amen. Amen. Woo-wee! Yeah. Peace of mind. Let me get out y'all here. The critical question. How do I get the peace of God? How do I get it? I need that peace. I need that peace that can sustain me when I get a disconnect notice. I need that peace that can sustain me when my marriage is in trouble. I need that peace of God that can sustain me when my children are in trouble. I need that peace of God that can sustain me when my health is failing. I need that peace of God when people are lying on me. I need that peace of God when folk have slandered my name. I need that peace of God when people have set traps for me. I need that peace of God when I can't find no job. I need that peace of God when people have set daggers up for me. I need that peace of God when people don't want to shout on Sunday morning. I need that peace of God when don't nobody want to say amen. I need that peace of God when people are rolling their eyes at me. I need that peace of God when people are throwing spitballs at me. I need that peace of God every day. Every Is there anybody in here that can say, I need the peace of God? I got three things to tell you about the peace of God. In order to get the peace of God, first, would you get, before you can have, let, let, can I tell you something? Lean in. In order to have the peace of God, you've got to have peace with God. And for somebody today, you can't have peace of God because you don't have peace with God. You've been trying to figure it out. Thank God you came to church today. There's some area in your life that you have not repented over. There's some area in your life that you have not gone back to God and say, look God, what, or, or ask him, what have I done to cause me to not have no peace? Well, what is it that I've done to have caused me to be so restless and rebellious towards you? What is it that causes me to be so rebellious towards me? Because you do know that some of us are rebellious and restless with our own self. And and it's not all the time the enemy without that causes your peace less nights. Sometimes it's the enemy within me. How do I get peace with God? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to have upward Uh huh. To have upward peace means that you have to have peace with God. And I want to stop right here and say that if you are not born again, if you're not saved, there's no way you could ever have the peace of God. You may want it, but you cannot obtain it. Because the peace of God comes through justification by God. I wish I had some Bible study folk in here. Because Romans 5 and 1 says we are justified. And because we are justified by God, we now have peace with God. And so my brothers and sisters, if you're not saved, Uh, 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 if you're not born again, there's no way you could have this peace. And if you're not saved, if you're not born again, that puts you in condemnation. And condemnation is a declaration of war against God. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? That means if you're not born again, if you have not accepted Jesus as your savior, you can never have the peace of God because you at odds with God. You're at enmity with God. And so therefore, you can't have peace because condemnation is a declaration of war. But when you've been justified, when you said, Lord, I do believe, 
that Jesus Christ died for me, that he was buried and that he rose again and that living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he took my sins far away, justified he freed me. Justified means it's a legal term that says that God has acquitted us. We're in a court of law. We know we're guilty. We know we've done folk wrong. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We, we know that we all have sin. We know that we've fallen short of the glory of God. But justification says, I know you've done wrong. I'm not giving you salvation because of your moral character. I'm giving you salvation because of your legal status. I put you in the court and the judge who is God says, because you believe on my son Jesus Christ, you acquitted of all charges. And therefore, condemnation being a declaration of war, justification is a declaration of peace. And Jesus says that because I died for you and because I shed my blood for you and because you believe that I was buried, got up from the grave, now you're justified. Now you're no more an enemy of God. You are a friend of God. So I've got the upward peace. Then there's got to be some inward peace. I like it, I like it. Paul says in Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7, Paul gives us three things. And I have to reference that text because it's a reference of the peace of God. Paul tells us to do three things and then God to do three things. You write down Philippians 4, 4 through 7. You read it when you get home. It says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Make your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but about everything with prayer and supplication. Make your request unto, known unto the Lord. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can I tell you what that means? Uh, first of all, it means that you've got, if you want inner peace, oh Lord have mercy. If you want inner peace, You've got to make a choice to rejoice. I know you don't feel like it sometimes. I, I, I know that circumstances uh, may not seem always suitable to rejoice. But Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says again for emphasis, and again I say rejoice. There should be no distant intervals in your praise. God is looking for somebody that does not have a solar-powered faith. Can I tell you what that solar powered faith is? Solar powered faith means I only praise God when the sun is shining. But God is looking for somebody to have a nighttime faith. When it does not look good, when the sun is not shining, you've got to learn how to say hallelujah anyhow. And I wish I had some nighttime praises in here that can recognize that even though it may not be like you want it to be, that you can thank God because God is good all the time. Look at somebody, tell them you got to make a choice to rejoice. All right, wrong neighbor, look at the other neighbor, say you got to make a choice to rejoice. Not only do you have to make a choice to rejoice, you've got to show some willpower. Let your moderation be made known. Moderation, epi acres mean to have some restraint that when times get hard, you just can't lay down and die. But you got to show some willpower because somebody's looking at you. To see how you handle your storm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Folk are looking at you to see if you're going to match the shout. Amen. Show some willpower. And then the third thing you have to do is that you've got to pray about everything with Thanksgiving. Now, if you want some peace, you're going to listen to this. Because the word of God lays it out plain. He says, you got to make a choice to rejoice. You got to show some willpower. You got to pray about everything with Thanksgiving. Be careful for nothing. Uh, verse 6 says, by about everything with prayer and supplication, make your request be made known unto the Lord. And what he's literally saying is that he said, he say, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, 
don't pray. He says, pray about everything and tell the Lord, thank you for everything. I don't care how bad things may look. Everybody got something to be thankful for. Do I have any thankful folk in the house? He says, if you could, if you could, if you could make a choice to rejoice, if, if you could just show some willpower in your times of restlessness, rebelliousness, if you could pray about everything with thanksgiving. God says, if you do those three things, I'll do one thing. Yeah. Verse 7, he says, and the peace of God that passeth all understanding, that's called crazy peace. That's the type of peace that you have. Folk look at you and think you're crazy. They say, how are you going to be? How are you smiling and this didn't happen to you? How, what, what you so happy about and you going through? I, I know what you're going through, but a crazy piece makes you shout when ain't nothing happening, makes you laugh when nothing's funny, makes you cry tears of laughter when ain't no jokes being told. Crazy piece. Yeah. That passes all understanding. Listen, it says, that keeps your heart and your mind. Dean Cass, that word keep is a military term. It means to protect. God is a protector. He'll protect your mind. He'll protect your heart. He'll keep your mind from a meltdown. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Where you felt like you were just about to lose it and go ballistic, but he kept your mind from a meltdown. I'm going to stop right there and pick on you a little bit because I'm looking at some folk that almost lost it but he kept your mind from a meltdown. And he kept your heart from heaviness. He keeps your mind from a meltdown and your heart from heaviness. You've got to have upward peace. You've got to have some inward peace. I'm reminded of a story of Nicholas Ridley. 18th 55 was about to be put to death, was about to be executed. The night before he was executed, his brother came to his chambers, wanted to spend the night with him to give him some comfort, to give him some solace. And uh, Ridley said, no, I don't want you to do that. He said, I, I need to go to sleep tonight. Because I know that God is going to give me a peace that passes all understanding. And brothers and sisters, as I close, I want to suggest that if you have upward peace, and if you have some inward peace, then that will re result to some outward peace. Then you'll learn how to love somebody. Somebody that has done you wrong. You'll have peace with somebody. Somebody that has set traps for you. You'll have peace with somebody in the midst of life's storm. And th that's why Jesus said, uh, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Turn and tell your neighbor this morning, uh, I've got peace on the inside. I've got peace that makes me love my neighbor. And tell the other neighbor this morning uh, I've got peace I've got the peace of God And this peace that I have uh, It gives me a good night's sleep This peace that I have uh, It puts the joy in my heart Is there anybody in here That has some Jesus peace Then do me this one favor this morning uh, Grab that neighbor by the hand this morning and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, say, neighbor, I know a man that's from Galilee. When I was in trouble, uh, he set me free. Son of David, seed of Abraham, stone you out of a mountain, a meek and humble lamb. Ain't he all right? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say thank you, Jesus? He will. He'll give you peace in the storm. He will. Give you a smile on your face. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Do me 
you one favor this morning and I'll leave you alone. Grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, have you been justified? Have you been brought with a price? Do you believe that Jesus died, that he was buried, and that he rose again with all power in his hands? Then say, neighbor, if you believe that, there ought not be a frown on your face. There ought to be a smile on your face. There ought to be some peace in your heart. There ought to be some joy in your heart. There ought to be some mouth to praise. There ought to be some clapping on your hands. Yeah! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I got one more thing. And I'll leave you alone. I had some struggles this week. I just about lost my peace. But then I had to go back to the word of God and remind myself that I was brought with a price and that I'm a child of the king and that I'm an heir to the throne. And I said, Lord, don't move my mountain, but give me uh, the strength to climb. Don't take away my stumbling block, but lead me on. Lead me on. Say yeah. Yeah, that's her. Lead me all around. I had to get in my prayer clothes and say, Lord, if I've done something to remove my peace, then forgive me, creating me a clean heart, restoring me the right spirit. And after I had a talk with the Lord, I had a talk with myself. Because sometimes uh, you got to talk with yourself and remind yourself uh, you can make it. You can make it. Ah, yeah. You can make it. And then after I talked to myself, I realized, Mount Herman, that I had to encourage somebody else. Because when you got peace with God and you got peace within, you got to spread peace wherever you go. Is there anybody in here that can thank God today for the peace of God? Can you say yeah? Can you say hallelujah? I got one more thing, and I'm going to leave y'all alone. If you're not too cool, if you're not too mean, stand on your feet. Get out of your pew. Go find five people. Put your hand in that neighbor's hand and say, I've got peace on the inside and I want to share the peace that I have with somebody else. Do it right now. Yeah! Ah, yeah! woo Yeah! I said, I know the man is all right. Is there anybody here that knows the man is all right? Say yeah! Woo! Yeah! Yes, sir! Y'all excuse me now. I'm just celebrating. Sometimes I feel better when I can just shout it out. When I've got a stain on my white shirt, I put some shout in and it can shout it out. When I need some peace and some peace within, sometimes I feel better if I can just shout it out. Haney, all right. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! Ah, 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 yeah! 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 yeah. Yes, sir! The 
doors of the church are open. Romans, Romans 3 and 23 says that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and 8 said, but while we were yet sinners, God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I want to extend an invitation this morning for someone who's never accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. For someone who perhaps you're not sure that if you died tonight that you would go to heaven. For someone who has never been introduced to the Lord Jesus, for someone who has never been baptized, for someone who may be in the fellowship but fallen out of the fellowship, I want to give this invitation with you in mind. It comes a point in all of our lives when we have to change, when we must make a change. If today is your day, won't you come? I see one coming this way. Let the church say amen. Come on, Reverend Gant. right yourself there will be no need for Jesus Christ but because he died on the cross for you he died so that you may be able to obtain eternal life will there be one today for pastor has already talked about the peace of God in order to have the peace of God you have to have peace with God and you can't have peace with God without going through Christ Jesus. Will there be one today? We extend to you the privilege of letter, restoration or Christian experience, and even baptism. You can come down the aisle asking, what must I do to be saved? And we will share the gospel of Christ with you. That he was born, that he died, he got up with all power in his hands so that we might be able to live. He took our place when he died on the cross. As a matter of fact, he held on to the nails so that you could see the love that he exuded for us. It's only right to respond to him in love by giving our lives back unto him. I know sometimes the things in the world seem like they may be more glorified than those things that take place in Christ. However, you can't have the joy in the world that you can have in Christ Jesus. Only he can give you brand new life. And he can give it to you more abundantly. To those that may be watching us over the internet, you can reach out to us at herman at ameritech.net. 
That's H-E-R-M-O-N at A-M-E-R-I-T-E-C-H dot net. And someone will correspond back and forth with you. Helping you to come to know Christ. some girl under the very sound of my voice that is wrestling with indecision we ask that your word that has gone forth will be planted so deeply within their hearts that they will come giving their lives unto you Father God for you said in your word that your word would not return unto you void but it will accomplish that that you purpose. Father God, thank you for using Dr. Moses in such a mighty way. For he has planted the seed. Someone else will may come along and water it. But we know, Father God, that you will give the increase. So we ask right now that you will cover them now. Lord God, grant them yet another opportunity to, get them, to give their lives unto you. This is our prayer. In your blessed son Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Let us all say amen. 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 Let's give God some praise for the one that has come. Wow. Thank God for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. We certainly pray that the word on today empowered you, encouraged you, and enlightened you. It is our prayer that you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Our doors are open. Our address is 7848 South Normal here on the south side of Chicago. Our phone number is area code 773-874-3510. Or you can contact us by email. Our email address is Herman, H-E-R-M-O-N, at Ameritech. That's A-M-E-R-I-T-E-C-H dot net. Every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, we offer, offer our Christian Growth Academy. And every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we have the Hour of Power, a power-packed prayer meeting. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to www.favornetwork.net. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning. God bless you.